Hey YouTube, so this problem is problem 91 from chapter 4 from the section on superposition. And superposition says that given a linear circuit like the one we have here, uh, one additional way that we can find the voltage is to dis, uh, dis consider each um, power source independently their effect on the circuit element and sum them up. So in this case we have a linear circuit. It's made up of a 110 volt independent voltage source. You have 5 ohms here, 10, 12, 2, and a 4 amp independent current source. So superposition says that if we're trying to find the, um, this voltage drop across that 10 ohm resistor, then that voltage drop is going to be the sum of the power, the voltage from the 110 circuit element source plus the voltage drop from the 4 amp. So that will be, so we'll, we will consider them individually and add them up and that will give us the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor. Why is that important? That's important because sometimes you can't just uh, use the node voltage method or the mesh current method to find a voltage drop and in that case you will, um, you have superposition as um, the only way where that's possible. Um, or you have um, a more complex circuit, and sometimes superposition is the only technique that will work for finding a voltage drop. So in this case, we, we could have used the mesh or the um, node voltage method, but, um, but we're studying the section of superposition, so we will be using superposition for that. So first we're going to consider what effect the 4 amp um, source has. And to do that, we're going to disable the 110 source. So we're going to disable that by shorting out the current source, or the voltage source. So we got 5 here, we got 10 here, 2 here, 12 here. And we have 4 amps there. Okay? So we're just going to short out the 110 independent voltage source. And if you have the ability to see um, series of parallel connections, you can take this and find the equivalent resistance. I find that I make mistakes when I do that. So it's um, so what I prefer to do is to use the mesh method, which I did, because it's um, I don't know. It's just a, um, something that I'm not very strong at, which is to look at pair series and parallel connections when I sort out a 110 voltage source. I can try and then make mistakes at it, or I can use the mesh method, which is ironclad. So I use the mesh method. So here I have some IA, and here I have some IB, and here I have negative 4. So I'm just going to start writing my mesh equations. So Mesh at IA gives me um, 5 times IA plus 4 plus 10 times IA minus IB, that's equal to 0. Mesh at IB will give me 10 times IB minus IA plus 2 times IB plus 4. And then plus 12 IB equals 0. Now I'm going to set up my matrix of IA and IB and solve for that. I've got IA, IB, and constants. So in the first equation, I've got 5 as a coefficient, 20, which will go on the other side with constants as negative 20, and we've got plus 10 IA and minus 10 IB. That's the first line. The second line is 10 IB and then negative 10 IA, and then plus 2, and then minus 8, and then plus 12. Okay, so that's our matrix. Now we are going to solve our system of simultaneous equations. Now like I said though, if you can figure this out by just finding the equivalent resistance, that's going to be the much easier method. I'm using the more difficult method because it's ironclad and I can't make a mistake from the mesh method. Whereas it's very easy for me to make a mistake by how I personally interpret a um, 
a series or a parallel connection. So let's try that again. It didn't give me the same answer as before. 15 minus 10 minus 20. And then negative 10. Oh, okay, so I made a mistake on this one. This should be 10 plus 2 plus 12. And then F5. Okay. So this is the same answer as I got before. Okay, so what I got then is... So when you solve that matrix, you should come up with IA is... Um, So you should come up with IA is negative 2.154 amps and IB is negative 1.231 amps. So then V prime, right, which is, well, we'll just call that V, V4 amps. That's the voltage contributed by the 4 amp independent voltage source. So V4 amp is going to be 10 times IA minus IB, which is negative 2.5 4 minus um, plus 1.231 amps, that's going to give you negative 9.23. So V4 amps, I'm going to park this value here. So V4 amps is negative 9.23. So that's what's contributed by the 4 amp source. Now we're going to open the 4 amp source and consider only the 10, the 110 volt source. So when we open that, our new circuit looks like this. We got 110 volts. This is going to be 5. We got 10 here, 2 here, 12 here. So now we're going to find out what's being contributed by the 110 volts. I'm going to call this V110 take that to be your ground. So we're going to use a node voltage in this case, and node voltage will give us V110 minus 110 is equal to uh, over 5 plus V110 over 10 plus V110 over 14 is equal to 0. At this point, I assume that you've mastered the node voltage method. If not, please go back to the node voltage videos, you can search my channel for node voltage and find some of those, but I won't be going through that lesson because at this point in your career as an engineering student, you should know the node voltage very well. So then V110, from just from algebra, coefficients we have 1 fifth plus 1 tenth plus 1 fourteenth, and then this 110 will go on the other side as 1 ten over 5. So then V110 is going to be this divided by that. So, so then you're going to go 110 divided by 5, that will give you 22. And then 1 fifth plus 1 tenth plus 1 14 should give you 0.37142857. Now we're going to go 22 divided by 0.37142857. And that gives us 59.230769. So 59.23 is what's contributed by, so V110 is 59.23. Okay, so 59.23 minus 9.23 is going to be 50. So now we can say that V10, the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor, is going to be the effect of the 4 amp plus the effect of the 110 volt resistor, or uh, excuse me, voltage source, and that's going to be 59.23 minus 9.23, which is 50 volts. And that's the answer for part A. Part B is pretty easy. What's the power dissipated by that? Power is V squared over R, so power of the 10 ohm is going to be 50 squared over 10 
which is 250 watts. That's the answer for part B. Okay, you guys, if you got help from this channel, make sure to like and share, and good luck in your studies of engineering.